It's week 10, and while the weather seems a bit warm for December, the colder temperatures of the late season are on their way with a couple of cold fronts sweeping across the Midwest. In this episode for this week, we're gonna do things a little bit differently and focus on one specific topic and one tip that could greatly help you this late season. And often this opportunity goes wasted. For this episode, I'm actually gonna be sitting here right next to this dough. I actually harvested this dough last night. And this is a pretty common sight that you see as the late season starts. T things tend to get pretty slow after the rut. Hunters will actually start focusing more on filling their freezer than actually worrying about bucks or, or refocusing on bucks when the late season starts and trying to patter them on late season food sources. So this is a pretty common sight that you're gonna see. Hunters just killing does, practicing doe management or simply to fill their freezers. And when this happens, there's a great opportunity that can help you later when you're trying to pattern a buck. In last week's episode of Trail Cameras Weekly, we actually discussed and introduced the late season, how to scout for and hang trail cameras over late season food sources, what those food sources consisted of, and how to pattern a buck with using those trail cameras in two ways. One with the time lapse feature and one using a trail camera with the correct settings over a late season funnel. Trail cameras are by far one of the most important tools a hunter can use when patterning a buck or just to simply figure out where to hunt. But the opportunity that arises as you harvest a doe or a deer is harvested off of your property can be a great supplemental to or just simply provide extremely accurate intel as far as where to hunt, especially when it comes to late season and food sources. This information that goes along with this opportunity is such a common sense tactic and it's so easily obtainable. It again just often goes missed as you discard the gut pile after you field dress the deer. So we're gonna actually show you what to do with that gut pile, not waste that opportunity, how to figure out this information, how to figure out what deer are eating on your property. And again, that intel is extremely valuable for the late season. But before we do that, before we jump into the guts, we're actually gonna show you the hunt for this doe. When we return, I'll show you how to get that information. early just to see if there were some does feeding up in this field and sure enough we got some so we're sneaking down the valley we're gonna pop up on a fence row we should be able to get a shot right at uh, before sunset here so we're gonna hurry up sneak and try to be quiet luckily the rain's helping us out Well, we just got done sifting through the uh, stomach contents here on this dough. And actually by utilizing the gut pile, instead of just simply discarding it, once we're done field dressing the deer, you can get a lot of valuable information. Uh, again, this is extremely important to do and not just waste this gut pile because there is some really good intel in here. Um, to actually walk through this process, we're gonna show you two different gut piles, two different stomachs. Um, one of this dough, obviously, and one from a buck. Uh, Steve Smolinski killed a buck over in Pennsylvania. He's got some footage that's gonna help walk you through this process. There's a lot more in this process and this tactic than just simply taking a knife and slicing open the stomach. 
deer are voluminous, which means they have four chambered stomachs. They have uh, to start when they're out in the field or out in the crop field or in the food plot and they're eating, they're taking in large quantities of food and they're actually storing that in their first chamber of the stomach, their rumen. And this is where you get the term chewing their cud comes from. Once they return back to their bedding areas, they're sitting all day and they're chewing their cud. They actually, that food comes back up, slightly digested, slightly fermented, that term cud, that's where it comes from. They chew it back up and they actually send it down to their second chamber of their stomach, the reticulum, where the main part of that digestion takes place with the microorganisms in that chamber of the stomach. It then moves on to the third chamber of the stomach, the omasum, where the water is absorbed from that slightly digested food. It then gets passed to the final chamber of the stomach, the abomasum, where further digestion takes place to get it ready for the intestines with the gastric juices. Now by opening up the ruminant reticulum, we can actually see and identify what food sources they have been concentrating on. And you'll be able to tell the different chambers of the stomach just by how the food is digested at what state it is. And this is actually where you might start asking a question that frequently comes up once you start looking at stomach contents and it's how accurate of a picture does this give us as far as what food sources they are concentrating on. Um, say I killed this doe in that afternoon, so what kind of picture does that give me? Does that give me just what she's ate that day, a couple of hours ago? Uh, you, try, you start asking the question of what is the accurate time period that you're actually getting with these stomach contents. And from the time of consumption until it passes out the other end, it takes about 48 hours. So if you kill a deer in the afternoon or you kill a deer in the morning, you're still getting about two days worth, a very accurate picture of what that deer has concentrating on. Now from here, once you start sifting around and trying to make sense of all this mess, and once you start identifying uh, certain food sources, you can really start to apply certain percentages to figure out where the deer are spending their time as far as uh, what food sources they're concentrating on. For Steve's particular buck, once they looked at it, um, the first thing they that you will probably identify, first thing they identified is corn. And while it may look like a big majority part of the stomach contents, it's more probably like 20 to 30 percent, just because again, it's so big and it's the most easily identified. Um, 60 to 70 percent was found with forbs and grasses that's just more easily digested and becomes more of the, the mush consistency pretty pretty fast. Um, so that was the, that was the percentages on those particular food sources uh, and we would say about 10% in the woody brows where you found a bigger stems um, really a more late season food source that winter brows of early successional cover saplings uh, blackberries just the, the tips of those particular branches and saplings and those stomach contents they actually didn't find any food plot species or any uh, chomped up acorns just simply because there's such a lack on that particular property which makes a lot of sense once you are sifting through the stomach contents now when i opened up this dough it's a little bit of a different story we've got corn in here but actually the corn on the property is popcorn and when they're eating it it shatters a lot more we can see a lot more corn and acorns uh, both chomped up in here and mixed throughout the majority of the food uh, source on this particular property that we are seeing in here, which was that winter rye field. We thought that that was going to be the main, uh, the late season food source on this property, and we can clearly see that. If I would have to put and apply some uh, percentages on this particular, these stomach contents, I would probably put it again in that same ballpark of around 70% of that winter rye and some Forbes um, and, some, and some leaf matter just very hard to identify in here in this particular stomach contents a lot of that chopped up corn a lot of that chopped up uh, acorns in here about 30 percent i would say and then the rest 10 percent in the little bit bigger matter that we are finding that would be identified as that woody browse now it is kind of difficult to identify some of those food sources when you have a food source like winter rye that is pretty easily digestible or food plot species like clover that's very easily digestible. Um, it goes through a lot faster and it's kind of harder to identify obviously than corn or chomped up acorns or woody browse for that matter. Over the next couple of weeks, uh, especially when we get warm weather, take advantage of the time that you have uh, and do a little bit of doe management or if a deer is killed on your property or nearby your property, make sure you take the extra time. Ask if you can see that gut pile as weird as it may seem, but sift through those cu stomach contents. It can be a great supplement to your trail camera information or a great supplement to tell you what food sources your deer are concentrating on and potentially where to hunt or pattern a mature buck on. Often this information in this gut pile is a far more accurate representation of, of where your deer are spending their time and what food sources they are concentrating on over your trail camera information or just simply your observations.